Hey everybody, Preston Brent here with our Trader User Group, a weekly roundup. This is for the trading week ending March 11th, 2016. What I've got on the screen here is a weekly chart of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. And I just want to point out a couple of things. I'm going to start at the weekly first and then we'll drill down a little bit. Um, I've got volume at price as well as volume over time. And I want to focus right now just quickly on volume at price. And you can see on this chart here, this weekly chart, we have a couple of different areas here that I'm just highlighting where we've got this huge movement out. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, clearly a lot of volume occurred at these price levels right here, right? I mean, you can just kind of see where they've, where they've kind of come out and you, you can see that these are going to end up being uh, key resistance and support points, you know, as we, as we move forward. Uh, and let me just highlight a couple of things for you. Now, this this volume is based going back to the beginning of 2015, and I show it for a reason. Uh, let me just point out a couple of key things here. Um, I put a couple of uh, support points um, or resistance points, depending on your approach to this price level uh, on the chart. And you can see here that this first one really highlights this area right there. All right, that is a major area where a lot of volume took place, going all the way out here, just huge amounts of volume. And we're approaching that area up here right around 2036. Now, the opening price of the E-minis for 2016 for the year was just around this level here. So I could see us running up to that level. Now, we've got a couple of key things that are happening next week. we got triple witching where we got the quarterlies expiring, the futures, the monthlies. Um, a number of different option uh, series that are expiring, you know, given the name triple witching and or some people call it quadruple witching. It depends on what you want to count um, the monthlies, quarterlies, weeklies um, and so forth futures. But in any event, um, this week tends to be a, a bullish week or, or triple witching tends to be a bullish week. We've also got a lot of people that are probably rolling options over into the next front month from this month here that's expiring. But as you can see, uh, the momentum this week was clearly to the upside. And as we move up, you can see there's a lot of potential overhead resistance with all this volume sitting just north of us. You can see right here, if I just put a little bar on it and highlight it for you, you can see there's a lot of volume right in that area there, which is kind of where we've been stuck. And then, you know, down below where we saw also a lot of volume was right there. So these areas represent points of control, points of resistance, points of support. Um, and the choppy area that we've been in for quite some time is right in this area right here. Got a lot of resistance in this area, a lot of support in this area. So, you know, for our group, I'm calling this on a longer time frame, um, <clears throat> our first zone of resistance, and this is our first zone of support. And then obviously just sitting just below that is the a 2, 3.6 uh, pullback node from these highs made in, in May of 2015. So this is kind of where we're sitting right now. This week was a very strong week. I got our members long in this week right here as we started moving up. We are still long and we're also over allocated, I believe, but we've got a very strong several long positions in the energy market as well, including oil futures, USO and a few others. Um, but you can see how we've just had this huge move up. And as you guys know, nothing moves up forever and nothing um, uh, does so without some significant pullback or a little bit of a pullback. That's what I'm expecting. Now, we've got next week, as I said, a very data intensive week by the uh, U.S. government here, U.S. markets. We've got a lot of data coming out. And then on top of that, we got the FOMC with Janet Yellen coming out on Wednesday. And it's a quarter in, so it is traditionally uh, when she gets up to the podium and does her press conference. Now, the markets have the Fed funds, 30-day Fed funds futures have not priced in a rate hike for March. Um, but they're moving up the rate hike uh, from late 2016, early 2017 to earlier, sometime in the summer months of 2016. If she, you know, in her press conference says that the rates are going to probably, if she comes out as more hawkish, we're going to have a pullback. If she doesn't, then we'll be in our traditional Goldilocks 
scenario where low interest rates here where all other countries are doing stimulus so it's just going to be bullish for everybody and will continue to run up um, I usually don't like committing a lot of longs or a lot of shorts before a key uh, FOMC meeting um, especially a quarterly one when she steps up to the podium and, and you know starts talking but I wanted to show you these major areas on the weekly chart okay um, and you can see again this is just huge blast off the bottom one thing that really leads me to believe that we could still um, maybe not over the very near term but over the next <clears throat> three to six months suffer another pretty good uh, uh, drawdown and perhaps even go lower than our 1802 level that we made here is that there is no divergence here uh, traditionally when we've got you know a a cessation of the strength of a down move especially on the second down move here you have a little bit of a bullish divergence we did not get it in this case I mean none at all you know from here to here even though it's a little bit lower um, I wanted to see some divergence going up like that we did not get it so on a weekly chart coming all the way out to here which puts us into Q4 of 2016 you know we are susceptible to a larger down move near term uh, you know it's just you know we're, we're a rocket ship up with little minor pullbacks like that um, but then I think we're gonna start to run into some trouble but near term as I indicated we're all bullish um, if I come in and let's just take it down to a daily chart you're gonna see on the daily chart here again the volume here and if I keep it um, and now I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit more you can see uh, and this goes all the way back to uh, Q4 of, of 2015 you can see where this volume of control is right here so again by the same token uh, if we're looking at where buyers are sitting and where sellers are sitting we got a lot of uh, um, areas here that the volume just really peaked and you can see where they are as I draw in these um, uh, uh, rectangular boxes here um, I would do the same thing on this chart right here and say this is kind of our uh, uh, area here where we can just we can stay for a while because we got a lot of buyers and sellers committing to this area right here down here we got a lot of support a lot of volume down here um, and then we got a lot excuse me a lot of overhead resistance here with a lot of potential sellers or at least they were sellers in this area here now the question is if we do approach it over here will they be sellers and still or will they convert over to buyers keep in mind that a lot of this move here on a daily uh, chart uh, is a lot of shorts being taken out of the market because there were a ton of shorts as we got in here if I come in and show you let's look at and this is volume um, over price if I come in and let's take a look at volume over time uh, and just to show you guys let me blow it up I'm staying with the daily chart here for a minute and I've shown this before but I think it's pertinent that I show it again you can see that huge down move there and I run a 5 um, over a 20 EMA for volume just to kind of give me a gauge of where is volume a weekly volume average over a monthly volume average and you can see here the 5 is over the 20 so there's a lot of volume here with and associated with that down move the minute we start moving up like that notice the 5 goes below the 20 and we're down in this area here so there's a lot of low volume here the minute we start moving back down again notice the 5 coming back over the 20 to the upside so there's more volume and then we finally get our second bounce right here I got our members long right in this area here but notice the 5 goes back below the 20 and it is only until today that we got a nice bump in volume now some of that is attributable to the role in the futures but a lot of it also some of it is not okay um, so there's some new longs coming in here if we can sustain you know let's say the 5 over the 20 if I can sustain it on my chart as far as average volume goes that's a good thing all right so I wanted to see that but up until really this bar right here going forward all of this volume is not conducive to um, a solid move up it is mostly short covering and not a lot of belief that I'm going to go into new longs now as I'm telling my members 
in three days we got the FOMC meeting so it we could have momentum carrying us up a little bit in the e-minis but I do not think there's going to be a lot of new long positions established in front of the FOMC um, I just don't see a lot of longs doing that now after the FOMC all bets are off it depends on what they're going to tell us as to where we go from here um, if they come out and yell and she, you know the markets are forecasting she's going to come out and be dovish which is the way she's been you know the time that she's been sitting in the chair um, and if she's dovish we've got that Goldilocks scenario as I said where all other countries are pumping money the central banks are pumping money into their countries respective economies and the US is just sitting back and not taking money out we've got low interest rates so it's the best of all worlds we can continue to just run this bull train all the way up um, and if I put in um, let me just take these uh, uh, support areas out because they're key from 2015 right but let me just take them out for a minute and I'm going to put in uh, current levels here you can see in these current levels here the 20 uh, 2016 open price right here 2037.75 that was the opening price for e-minis for this year the high for the e-minis for the year was I think on the same day that the markets opened in the beginning of January 2016 at 2043.50 so I could see this momentum just carrying us through this area um, um, possibly even prior to the FOMC but not much higher and then as I showed you with these these shaded zone here shaded zones here um, I would call this a significant amount of resistance up in this area here uh, or a significant amount of support uh, down in the bottom down here like that so you know that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, right now as, as I just kind of lay out these these areas here for you now if we come over and we look at the uh, Russell uh, the Russell is a key area for us <clears throat> that I'm looking for small cap I'd like to see small cap come in and really take off and if I look at the rut and let me just let me adjust my 2016 low I thought I had it down there set I don't know how I got backed up like that but if you look at the 2016 low the 2016 high you can see the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA so we're sandwiched right in the middle okay and <clears throat> I want to see that we we see some strength in the Russell more strength in the Russell in fact today Friday the Russell was the best performing index uh, it was up about 2.09 percent the Russell futures uh, their cash index the Russell is up 2.22 percent and then if we come down and we look at the Nasdaq which just got totally decimated uh, you can see the Nasdaq also is above the 50 but just slightly below the 200 EMA so both the Russell and the Nasdaq need to recapture their 200 EMA the Dow and the uh, E-minis have recaptured their 200 EMA but you can see where we're sitting here on the Russell so um, again next week I don't see a lot of new long commitments coming into the market before the FOMC and if Yellen gives us the Goldilocks scenario where she's still dovish then I think we're gonna run higher uh, if not I think a little bit of a pullback is in order not a strong but I think a little bit of a pullback is in order here um, if we come down and we look at the um, uh, 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 volatility index VIX the VIX you can see here we are still in uh, what I call zone 2 on this daily chart and the zones have different consequences regarding option strategies that 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 we like to trade um, and the higher the zone the, the the more the premium that are in the options market so we just shift our strategies a little bit based on what zone that we're in and we're coming down and we're testing the lows and volatility that we made back in March 4th um, but again I think a lot of this is going to hinge on the FOMC that we have coming up the other thing that we're doing that's really interesting if we look at the bond market you can see the bonds were off over a full handle in 11 ticks today we actually blew through the 50 EMA and a key support zone at 161.18 so money and this is with bond auctions that we had here this week and 10-year note auctions where they tend to be bullish uh, and you can see where uh, the markets the bonds tended to move up a good bit and then they gave it all back up again because we also had Mario Draghi uh, this Thursday with the ECB 
Um, so we've got some trades that we're looking at in the bond market for our members. And then obviously in the um, currencies, we got currency trades that we're looking at also. We had a great trade in the currencies on the Super Mario Draghi Day. That was Thursday. We took the dollar. But you can see how the euro head faked everybody, went all the way down and closed up near the highs. There was a reason for that. I explained it with our members. Um, and if you're not a member of our group, I highly encourage you to come on in because we got a lot of cool things coming up and a lot of great potential trades setting up for 2016. We've had a good start to the year. Uh, we got all our members in long back on February the 11th when we actually had the trigger and we've just been, you know, rocket ship up so far. Uh, we're tightening our stops as I think this run's about to come to a little bit of a halt. Um, and then we're going to listen to what Yellen has to say. Um, but that is the, the euro. And then also, uh, we've had a, key, a couple of key breakouts in the Australian dollar. Uh, you can see right here, huge up move today on the Australian dollar. We were playing it back down here around the 68, 69 area to the long side. You know, really great trade. Australian dollar's done now. Well, the Japanese yen is a trade that people get into and a risk off. You can see it's starting to pull back a little bit. Um, I think this one may have one more bounce higher, but I think it will roll lower. Uh, if we look at gold, now gold has been a really good trade for us in 2016. You can see we actually made a new high today before it kind of reversed trip and went down for us. Um, over 21 points. So we moved down a pretty good bit. I have been calling for gold to pull back to around 1200 um, and I'm not going, I'm not chasing gold higher at this point in time. I want to have it pull back a little bit before we look at doing longs again. And then, of course, if we look at oil, as I said before, I've gotten our members in uh, long oil, both oil futures as well as some of the energy stocks and, and, and um, uh, gasoline. It's a seasonal time for all of this um, and a couple of small stocks as well that we've we made some great money and one of them we doubled our money in just a couple of days. It was a really cool trade. But anyway, you can see where we're sitting right now with oil. Um, the odds favor a little bit of a pullback. You can see I've got a huge zone of resistance just sitting overhead here uh, in the middle 40s. Um, and now the question everybody wants to know is have the blows for 2016 been put in for oil? <clears throat> right now it would appear so. Um, I am expecting a little bit of a pullback, but we're going to use pullbacks as a buy on the dip. I don't think oil is going to get much above the mid-40s for 2016, but then again, we can have some craziness come out of OPEC that would change that. But net-net, we've been long uh, a number of different energy products, so we've had some fun times there. We, I also, in the agricultural market, I posted some a new trade for our group. Um, it looks like it's going to work out well for us. And then we got some things going on uh, in other markets as well, as well as equities that we're looking at. So I've got a lot of things that we have going on, folks, uh, in the market. One other thing that I will show you is the Vanguard All World Index. You can see here we had a nice breakout. You can see this daily chart. Uh, where we started pulling back in the summer of 2015. It was a little bit of a heads up for us because the equity markets in the U.S. really didn't start pulling back till August time frame. But you can see we finally broke this down slow trend line and we closed up high. We got a little bit of a support area here. But this is good for uh, an all-world index. That's a good sign. That's helping commodities. I think commodities are providing some breath for this. Um, as well as um, uh, energy and oil products. And then the other one that we're looking at very closely is the transports. Transports tend to lead the way. We're near our 2016 highs again. We're well off of the 2016 open price. So we're in the green for uh, Dow Transports for the year. You can see we got a lot of overhead volume and potential sellers lurking up here. And the question is, will they convert to buyers? But there were a lot of sellers up in this area here, probably shorts. As we've been moving up, we've been having some short covering rallies. But I want to see some new longs come into the transports. And this will also give wind to the equity market. So there's a lot of other things that we're looking at, folks. But I wanted to give you a heads up as to where we are right now. If you're interested in our group, I highly encourage you to come in. We've got an international audience from the Asia Pacific area. Uh, all the way over to Europe, Latin American markets, Canadian markets, and U.S. markets. So we track it all, both commodities, 
uh, futures, uh, options on futures, as well as equity markets. So um, I think there's a special offer with this. We're getting new folks every week signing up. So I encourage you to come in. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a note. I get them all the time. Otherwise, have a great weekend. And as a final reminder, um, maybe I haven't reminded you yet, but then as an initial reminder and a final reminder for this video is that uh, daylight savings time for most of our North American folks. So Sunday morning, 2 in the morning, so Saturday night, roll your watches forward an hour. See you, our members, I will see you Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. or I'm sorry, 8 p.m. New York City time. See you guys. Have a great weekend, and I will be in touch. Ciao now.